Oh, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm up in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania again at the uh, Adams County Historical Society Museum. I've never been here before, so it's going to be the first time for me. So uh, we're going to take a tour of this place together. I heard it's a really nice place. So let's go inside and take a look. Uh, right now I'm walking through the parking lot. It's uh, a little bit rainy today. Had a big rain all day up here. There's a little carriage up here. It's a Tipton photographer, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This is a brand new museum. I think it opened last year. And as you can see on the sign up there, it's uh, USA Today's Best New Museum. They just voted on new museums around the area, and this got number one. So I'm going to go inside now and get out of the rain. So we'll see you inside. Okay, now we're going to be looking at some homemade tools used by the Indians. Got some drills, some gorgets. Nut skinner, some axes. Some banner stones, arrowheads. There's a nice bigger ones here. Some pottery sherds. Grinding stones and slabs. And some scrapers. We're all well, sir. Thomas and the boys don't let me work much anymore. I turn old man to complain. Oh, Mr. Gantis, good day to you, sir. Oh, Father, there's a post on All right, now we're looking at the Stanton family Bible printed in 1840. The Bible belonged to the family of Getty Ann Stanton daughter of Sidney O'Brien. She married Freeman Stanton and gifted the Bible to her son John W. Stanton in 1846. Here's a register of Negroes. Alright, here's a uh, sale of enslaved woman and daughter. It's an old chair. Now we've got some battle scarred canteen there. And got a pistol and a sword. Another canteen. Some kind of a chest. There's a pair of saddlebags. And that chest I just showed you is a surgeon's trunk. Here we got a U.S. breastplate and cartridge belt box plate. Here we got a Civil War musket. And this here belonged to uh, the Bible. It belonged to Corporal Samuel M. Stanton. And right here we got a Medal of Honor. And in there we got a sword and another musket. And over here we got a drum. And down here we got a fife of George Gibbs. And here we got some Caledonia relics. And some Confederate currency back there. And here's a homemade Confederate flag. The orders came at 4 o'clock. And here we got a flintlock musket. And to the right of that will be a decorative of cane. And right there we have a candle holder. 
And down here we got a pistol. A cartridge belt. And a sword. And in here we got a Confederate surgeon's kit. And just got some pictures there. There's a fife and a king and a coon. And here we just got some different cannonballs and, and cannon shots. And then down here is some uh, bullets and some other artifacts apparently dug up. And that little basket there, you can see we got a belt buckle in there and some ground found stuff and some bullets. And in there we got a silver platter and for uh, serving tea and things like that. And right there we got some bullets lodged in the wood. Now in here we got the Wheels Tea Service and Silver. And there's a picture of David and Kathleen Wills. And there's a Pennsylvania law books set of them. Now coming into this section, we got a World War I uniform on a mannequin. And here we have a World War I German steel helmet. And there back in there is a serviceman's dog tags. And uh, this helmet was uh, brought back from Eugene Hip of uh, Littlestown. He served in Company A, 313th Regiment, 79th Division, during the, the uh, Meuse-Argonne Offensive. And here's a book of Camp Colt magazine. Now, if you're wondering why World War I items are in here, it's because... General Eisenhower served up here at Camp Colt during World War I. There's a World War I doughboy helmet and gas mask. And here's a Purple Heart flown to Joseph A. Williams of Gettysburg, was killed by German artillery fire September 28, 1918, during the Mugaz Offensive. Sorry, I screwed that one up. Now here's a game board. All right, here's the uniform of Elizabeth Fells. During World War II, Elizabeth Fells served in the U.S. Army Nurse Corps and rose to the rank of captain. You see our captain bars up there. And here's Colonel John Rice's World War II side cap. And there's a uniform of the 101st Airborne. And here's an Iraq War uniform. That was worn by Lance Corporal Ponce. And here's a Hotel Gettysburg lectern used by Dwight D. Eisenhower at the Hotel Gettysburg. There's a letter from Eisenhower to John Rice, November 19, 1955. And this here is Eisenhower's office sign. 
There's Eisenhower's Presidential Golf Clubs. And his uh, golf scorecard there. And here's a picture of uh, D Dwight David Eisenhower. Now this little section right here is the theater. You go in from the other side and then come out this door here. They'll show you a little movie, but you can see up close they got bullet holes in it. And right there is an artillery show that's in the wood. And over here, there's a hole in the wood where an artillery piece went through the wood. And you can see a little ball there stuck in the wood. And here's a little story about the, uh, the surf, surfy tree. And it had a cannonball stuck in the tree right there, as you can see right here in the photo. And right here is the original cannonball from that surfy tree. Now, to the left here is a creation of the famous surf, surf big tree. And coming around here a little bit, we can see that there's the cannonball stuck in the tree right there. And up on top there, you can see an eagle. And you can walk through here. They got like a little photo gallery. And you can see here, yeah, they tell about each of the people and the little children. In my position, it is somewhat important that I should not say any foolish things. There's a little hand fan with the Pennsylvania State Monument at Gettysburg on it. And just different ribbons there. Now this is a bone shaker. Gettysburg native Henry Stewart built the bike from a kit in 1888 and rode it around the town of the battlefield. Bikes like this were sometimes nicknamed bone shakers because of the rough ride on the solid rubber and not air-filled tires. And here's a Japanese photo album. Donald Krauss, a Fairfield witness, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Later, while serving in the South Pacific Theater as an Army combat engineer, he fought Japanese soldiers' photograph album and noted, excuse me, he found the Japanese soldiers' photo album and mailed it home as a souvenir of the conflict. And right here we got a Spanish American War Canteen. And right here we got an Eddie Plank's bat. Eddie Plank was a, a decent hitter for a pitcher. He, he comp compiled a .206 lifetime batting average with 130 home run, excuse me, 130 runs scored, 122 batted in, and three career home runs. Plank used this Louisville slugger during his major league career. There's a little bit more of the gallery. Now I'll show a little animation here of the Battle of Gettysburg. It was a complete route for the Union soldiers. An officer rode his horse up and said, All you good people, go down in your cellars or you will all be killed. The retreat was something terrible. Now human words can describe it. The rattle of musketry, the screeching of shells. All right, now we got some artifacts from the fire department. On top there is a harness decoration. And then right here is a carpenter's hammer and a courthouse weather vane. And down there at the bottom, we got some leather fire buckets. 
a lot of crackling going on for over the years. And here's a fire company sign. Just some artifacts here. Here's a uh, furnace. And there's a Democrat drum, 1856. And it's paintings back there. And a long rifle with the gunpowder flash. Now here's some information about Adams County during World War II. More than 6,000 of our men and women served in every branch of the armed forces. At least 122 gave their lives in the line of duty. And here we have a home front poster for, for home and country. Victory, Liberty Line. And here's a large wall map of Adams County, Pennsylvania. All right, I just come out of there. It wasn't too bad of a museum. wasn't what I was expecting, but not too bad. Now, they had a room in there where uh, it was like going in. They had a dark inside, and it was like uh, being in a home during the Civil War. And they had like a, you know, a man and a woman that lived in the house and their kids. And uh, they had a light, like a little light show going on. And uh, they had, uh, it sounded like the battle going on outside with uh, cannonballs, you know, cannon shots going off. And, and they actually had the floor vibrating. And then they had like a little light show where they, they would point single lights, which looked like uh, bullets coming through the wall. So that was pretty cool. All right, well, if you like this video, please give it a uh, like, and uh, please hit, uh, ring that notification bell, and please subscribe to my channel. Until then, see you on the next video. Have a good week.